You are now listening to The Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to The Forefront Radio. Thank you for tuning in to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afio Levi Israel. Now, if you're interested in helping us promote our brand, please feel free to donate to our cash app. Our cash app is uh, dollar sign Afiel Levi. That's A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I. And that'll go directly to the Forefront Radio so we can produce more incredible shows for you to listen to. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download this free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. We have to understand something. How can you talk about freedom and justice for all when you were brought under the banner of servitude? How can you talk about freedom and justice for all when you were brought in shackles and chains with yokes about your neck? The Bible says that the children of Israel will be scattered into all nations under the banner of slavery. This was a global slave trade. Luke chapter 21 verse 21 through 24 says you're going to fall by the edge of the sword and you're going to be led away captive into all nations. So the question for the critical thinker is this. Who did that happen to? Did that happen to the Chinese? No. Did that happen to the Arab? No. Did that happen to the European? No. Did that happen to the people that call themselves Jewish? No. What race of mankind on the earth was taken into captivity into all nations? You think this global slave trade would be not documented in the greatest history book known to mankind? You're looking at the Bible and you don't realize that it's talking about you. Yes, you. The people that are impacted by slavery and colonialism. The people that were taken to America, taken to the Caribbean islands, taken to France, Portugal, taken to Spain as slaves. The Bible says that the the gospel, the gospel of the Jesus Christ that we know of is a black man that came to set liberty to the captives. That's Isaiah 61, verse 1. Who needs saving? Who needs liberty? Does the French need liberty? Does America need liberty? Who is oppressed? Who is getting brutalized in the streets? Who is getting gunned down when you know, categorically and statistically, they committed no crime? You're being persecuted over a traffic violation. You're being murdered and slaughtered. Ask Sandra Bland, was she free? Ask Trayvon Martin, was he free? Ask George Floyd. A lot of people talk about that they're woke. You're fake woke. The scripture says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness, awake to who you are. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen as we listen to the Forefront Radio, where you will find out the truth in regards to your true nationality. Yes, when you read about the Bible, when it says, my skin is black, it's talking about you. When you read Song of Solomon, when it says, look not upon me because I am black, it's talking about you. When it comes to the greatest man that walked on the face of the earth, Jesus the Christ died a black man's death, died through crucifixion, lynched on a tree, hair like wool, feet like brass burned in a furnace. Who could this be talking about? This is talking about you, your people, the lost tribes of Israel.
You were listening to the Forefront Radio. Thanks for listening in. We're going to tune to Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and verse 8. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. So according to the scriptures, we are going to reveal to you who the wicked is, according to the Bible, their system of governance, and how they operate in this world. The next scripture we're going to look at is Job chapter 9, verse 24. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So who's that? whoever is controlling the earth right now, that's who the wicked is according to the Bible. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So if it's not those that are in power today, who is he? Who's controlling the Vatican? Who's controlling the United States of America? Who's controlling Europe? Who's controlling the United Nations? According to the Bible, that is the wicked. Now let's check out this history real quick. In this episode of Legacy of the Wicked, we are going to touch upon the British Empire and their influence in world dominance and how they have impacted the world tremendously. We're going to touch on the legacy also of Queen Elizabeth, who recently passed away in the month of September 2022. The British Empire was composed, according to Wikipedia, of many dominions, colonies, protectorates, and mandates, and other territories that were ruled and administered by the United Kingdom and its predecessor states. It began with the possessions of trading posts established by England between the late 16th and early 18th centuries, and it spanned also all the way to British colonialism. By 1913, the British Empire had rule and domination uh, over well over 400 million people. 400 million people. During the age of quote-unquote discovery, which is the age of enslavement and colonization, in the 15th and 16th centuries, initially Portugal and Spain started with European invasion of the planet and in process established large overseas empire. Then followed England, then followed France, then followed the Netherlands, which is the Dutch, and also the Americas, Spain, and the United States of America, Canada, and other regions. So if you ever want to know any type of history, it's always good to ask the indigenous populations of slavery and colonialism. Colonialism involved the mass ethnic cleansing, persecution, enslavement of many cultures throughout the world. You can go into many different subsections and sections on touching this, which would be thousands of pages of documented history and things that have been left out of the manuscripts of the world, such things as the British colonization of the Americas, British America, the so-called 13 colonies, the British West Indies, British's part in the Atlantic 
slave trade. British's part in colonialism in the continent of Africa. Their influence spanned over several centuries of horrible atrocities. And they have not at a single moment paid for these atrocities. I'd like folks to keep this in mind. There is no statute of limitations on ethnic cleansing, global slave trading, religious and political indoctrination. But let's listen to a news clip from a uh, person talking about the legacy of the Queen's death that revives criticism of Britain's legacy of slavery and colonialism. Chris Manjapra is a professor of history at Tufts University with expertise in the history of colonialism and empire. Well, he joins us from Truro, Massachusetts. Uh, welcome to the programme. What do you make of the pomp and ceremony that we've witnessed so far with the Queen's passing? Well, you know, thanks for having me, first of all. And I've been struck by the, the mania in uh, the media over, you know, covering the death of the Queen in this way. Um, yes, you know, mourning is, is definitely appropriate when there's someone who passes in a family and someone who's very well known. But in discussing and talking about the, the glorification of the Queen, as we're seeing in her passing, what aren't we talking about? You know, that's kind of the question that I'm left with, specifically the violence that has been committed in the name of this queen really over the course of her whole reign. That's what really worries me, that that story is not being told and it's not in the media. Yes, this is exactly true because the Bible says those that forsake God's laws praise the wicked. The wicked is who's ruling the earth today. As we read in previous clips and previous episodes, the earth is in control by the hand of the wicked. The Bible calls them various titles, such as Babylon the Great, Edom, Idumia, the man of sin, the whore, the beast, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of ungodliness, the mystery of sin, the wicked, Lucifer, the son of perdition. There is various titles that are given throughout the Bible for the Greco-Roman Empire and its descendants. So why is the legacy of imperialism still so important today then, do you think? Well, um, you know, there are many people in our world, in fact, the majority of our world, um, who understand uh, at a family level um, and at national levels uh, why imperial violence matters. Um, when we look at how decolonization ended, yes, it ended in the time in which Queen Elizabeth came to the throne in the 19th, but it began in the 1950s when she came to the throne. We've been in a period of decolonization from the 1950s onwards. But during the same period, we've seen ongoing injustice. Uh, we've seen under the rule of Queen Elizabeth, we've seen the violence um, and the plunder uh, and the massacres that took place in Malaya, uh, in Yemen, in Aden, um, uh, in Kenya, the Mau Mau uh, uprising. We've seen underdevelopment that has been made systemic in places like the Caribbean and Africa um, and even South Asia. And, you know, in my own research, I just determined, I discovered that it took until 2015 for the British government to, in fact, stop paying its debt that it took out about 180 years ago for slave owner reparations. And so he's telling you of his own words that Britain paid slave enslavers money after slavery was over. So they were double dipping, y'all. 
not only were they getting paid for slavery, I'm trying I'm trying to uh <laughs> it's hard to hold back the agitation when talking about these events because you have to be critical and provide accurate criticism without involving emotion. There's no emotion involved in this. We want to state the facts unequivocally because people get really emotional when we start talking about these things and we want to avoid that. We want to show the proof and evidence from a historical perspective. Britain has had a legacy of doing vast amounts of atrocities to various groups of people throughout the world. And they're not going to get away with it. This was being carried on again in the name of the Queen. So the, the past of colonialism continues to live on today and partly it's because we continue to tell the story of the empire and not appreciate the pain and the suffering and the plunder of those who have been colonized by that empire. That, that Think about the words he is saying. A vast majority of the planet speaks English. Why? Due to the influence of Britain and America and Canada and all these British subjects that created the system that we are under today, which is European extremism, European Eurocentric indoctrination, as the Bible calls it, the world wonders after the beast. The world worships those that do wickedly. It makes no sense. People want to look like they're Europeans when they are not. People speak Eurocentric dialects, Romanized language that were characterized and broken down into the various groups of indigenous populations that are no longer speak their common tongue or they have English as a second or third language. And they quote unquote call it civilization. The rooster will come home to roost. That's something that we need to make some space for, I think. Some people might say that all the atrocities of imperialism were in the past, and so it's time to move forward now, time to move on. How would you respond to that? Well, I think it's you know convenient to um, think of atrocities as uh, kind of linked to a particular date in the past, and we're able to do that if we don't recognize the way that, in fact, atrocities continue through time. It, it, when you look at colonialism, the story is really not about an end followed by a beginning of, uh, you know, a commonwealth or a beginning of uh, the, the post-colonial era. It really is about injustices that have been papered over, um, have not been uh, recognized, amends has not been paid, reparation has not been made. And because of that, in fact, this violence has become structural. It determines the international relationship between Britain and its post-colonies, and it determines the national experience of people in the post-colonial world today, um, the suffering in the post-colonial world. And that has a lot to do with unsolved business. Uh, and that also unsolved business is, is very conveniently being swept under the rug in this kind of, you know, overt display of, of sadness and mourning. You know, I think of it another way, which is to say, why is it so easy to feel sorrow uh, and to feel mourning for the death of Queen Elizabeth II, but it's so hard to feel remorse for the death and the suffering of millions of people who have suffered in the name of Queen Elizabeth II? And I'm going to say why. Because they don't care. They do not care. The but why would someone care when they were created for the sole purpose of deceiving the world? Listen, the Bible is like a movie script. 
there are those that created by the Most High to be God's chosen people, to be the righteous, and those that were created to be the wicked. In this episode and many other episodes, we're entitling it Legacy of the Wicked because before Christ's return, we have to expose the truth. Well, many will come from a religious perspective due to indoctrination and say, we wrestle against, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and, and spiritual wickedness in high places, brother. Listen, principality, that's a kingdom. Kingdoms are ruled by kings and queens. Dominions are ruled by empires. These spiritual forces control men. For example, when you read the book of Daniel, there's a chief prince of Persia. There's a chief prince over Greece. There's a prince over Europe. There's a prince over America. But these spiritual forces use people. Let's listen on. I think that's actually a very important question to sit with. Given what you say then, where does all this leave the future of the Commonwealth? Well, um, you know, back in November 2021, I think we got a clue to that story when Barbados took the step to leave the Commonwealth and to declare um, its status as a republic. There are eight remaining um, Commonwealth nations in the Caribbean. Uh, I would imagine that we could expect to see others leaving in the coming years, and I would certainly welcome that as a path towards truth um, and acknowledgement of, of the past. But, you know, as we're having this, this, this thraldom um, internationally, really, we're, we're experiencing it in Britain, but I'm here in the United States, we see it all over our media today, is a thraldom um, of concern and, and, and sorrow and, and um, sadness uh, around the death of Queen Elizabeth II, you know, I'm in many ways wondering when do we get to talk about the death of the monarchy? Uh, and I think that, in fact, would be something to look forward to in this 21st century. Chris. So that's it on that, folks. And this series is going to continue on Legacy of the Wicked. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thanks for listening to The Forefront Radio. Tune in to The Forefront Radio, www.anchor.fm slash The Forefront. Listen every week on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, and many other platforms. Hey, my friend, you have just listened to The Forefront Radio. Please leave your comment and input about the show what you like about the show, as well as any general feedback on ways to improve. We need your help to acquire new equipment to implement studio quality video and audio to our friends. Contribute as little as $4.99. It's only worth a cup of coffee. Then we can produce documentaries, more episodes, and great info for the diaspora. Go to Cash App and enter A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I to donate to The Forefront Radio to cover our advertising costs and reach more people. Catch our next episode on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, anchor.fm slash The Forefront. Always remember, the truth shall liberate the mind. Peace to the heirs of promise and the heritage of the scattered 12 tribes. Hey, my friend, you have just listened to The Forefront Radio. Please leave your comment and input about the show, what you like about the show, as well as any general feedback on ways to improve. We need your help to acquire new equipment to implement studio quality video and audio to our friends. Contribute as little as $4.99. It's only worth a cup of coffee. Then we can produce documentaries, more episodes, and great info for the diaspora. Go to Cash App and enter A-P-H-I-E-L, 
L-E-V-I, to donate to The Forefront Radio to cover our advertising costs and reach more people. Catch our next episode on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, anchor.fm slash The Forefront. Always remember, the truth shall liberate the mind. Peace to the heirs of promise and the heritage of the scattered 12 tribes.